Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. We are here. Thank you, everybody, for watching the special and your kind words. Trended on Netflix for uh, about a week, maybe still trending, don't know. One of the top search things on that platform. We really appreciate that, as well as, you know, Tom Segura and Joe Rogan having me on to uh, hang out, promote that with them, had fun discussions with. Both of those gentlemen and Christina P, we did a crazy live stream at your mom's house. And then we did Joe the next day while we were down in Texas. And now we are back um, here in Los Angeles and um, uh, really excited. A lot of people really uh, feedback is very positive. So mm -hmm. we're happy about that. And, you know, it's uh, you know, it's good to. To have it out there and done, and then you know we are moving on uh, to uh, other things, to many other things, um, books and films and all kinds of stuff that is not in the immediate future, but hopefully in the not too distant future. We are working on a lot of stuff. Um, uh, there's a um, I sent this article to Ben. This was really strange and uh you know usually when people sue i always go like you know do you really need to sue because we're such a litigious country every billboard is like sue them there was a billboard when i was growing up me and my dad used to pass on the highway it was called 1-800-SUE-THEM um and that was the billboard and it was about uh you know your ability to sue anyone for any reason at all that's the type of country that, you know, we have. We have a country where the legal system, you know, basically exists as a, uh, you know, a, a place for personal vendettas, for get-rich-quick schemes, um, as a way to arbitrate any and all uh, disagreements. But then there are things where you go, okay, I, I get it. I get it. Now, whether you're a fan of lawsuits or not to handle problems, there are certain stories where I go, oh, I could see that. I could see a lawsuit there. That makes sense to me. Black mom sues LA Unified, which I believe is a school district, mm -hmm. over a cotton picking project at elementary school. Yep. This is going to be one of the lawsuits that I can understand. A black parent filed a civil rights lawsuit last week against the Los Angeles Unified School District and the Board of Education saying that a cotton field was set up at an elementary school in 2017 that was intended to teach students about the experiences of slaves. Rashonda Pitt said her 14-year-old daughter, who is referred to as SW in the lawsuit, experienced emotional distress as a result of the project at Laurel Span School that her social justice teacher said was to help students, quote, gain a real-life experience as to what African-American slaves had endured. Oh, boy. The suit also names the school's <laughs> then principal and social justice teacher's defendants. Since the project... Laurel Span School was closed and a new school, Laurel Cinematic Arts Creative Tech Magnet, was created in its place. Um, she said in September of 2017, her daughter, who used to vibrantly share her day with her mother, became very quiet and reserved. Um, and you imagine this. One day as Pitts was dropping off her daughter on campus, she saw a cotton field in front of the school and called the office to speak with the school's principal, Amy Diaz, who was unavailable. Pitt spoke with the assistant principal who explained that her daughter's class was reading Frederick Douglass's autobiography and that the cotton field was created so students could have a, quote, real-life experience of slavery. Well... They had a whole big thing. Mm -hmm. This was right over in West Hollywood. Of course. Yeah. Of course it was. They had a whole big uh, thing. And uh, so she didn't have to pick the cotton, her daughter. Um, but she had to watch other students complete the project while she was, while she cared for other crops in the garden. I mean, God, God, God help us. 
So I like they say, well, we're teaching the white kids about what happened uh, with slaves. So they're going to have to pick the cotton. But why don't you go tend to some okra or some other uh, vegetables in the garden? They have to have, they're making a black girl tend to vegetables in a garden while watching white people do the cotton thing. And th this is a good idea. This was someone's idea of a good idea. Um, and now there's a lawsuit. And there's a lawsuit now. I don't know how much emotional distress the uh, daughter uh, experienced. I imagine it's something. But a jury will decide. Mm -hmm. But again, it's one of those things where I go, of all of the things <clears throat> that people sue over, if your daughter came to you and said, I, uh, your black daughter came to you and said, I, uh, today at school they did a project where we picked cotton <laughs> to learn about the experiences of slaves. I can imagine that you would be upset about that. That would not go over big. So there is a lawsuit, and um, we don't know what will happen. We are waiting here with bated breath. We don't know. Um, sad. They tried to change the name of the school. They tried to, but this is going to follow them. It's going to, there's no getting around this. The problem with this is when people when people start to use their imagination and they're trying to be good people, they tend to do the most horrific things that have ever been done. This is not uncommon. When people are trying to be good people and they don't know how to be and they think they can flip a switch and understand something or be a quote part of the solution uh, on the right side of history, whatever it is. Um, and they start using their imagination. They start being creative about how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, the horror mm -hmm. is unending. Mm -hmm. It's a terror will be unleashed. They will do things that they think are genuinely good um, until people see them and go, what the fuck is this? I mean, they will literally, I mean, the idea that they had a cotton field in front of the school like they had to, this was not an accident. This was planned. It happened with the full knowledge of many, many people that had to sign off and go, this is a good idea. Let's get the kids out there. Let's get them picking cotton. That Then they'll understand what the slaves went through if they have to pick cotton in front of the school. Insane. But this is what happens when you have people that are going like, how can we creatively show children what slavery was like instead of worrying about other things? You go, how can we, let's put our heads together. How can we recreate slavery today for the kids? No, no, no. I know. I know we got the math test, but we want them to feel the lashes on their back and the calluses on their hands. We want to recreate chattel slavery today at school. How can we recreate settler colonialism after lunch? Yeah, that's a bad idea. This is a bad idea. This is not a good idea. 
This is the opposite of that. But this is not surprising. I know some people that would do something like this thinking that it is good. You know? No, we built a gas chamber in the gymnasium to teach the kids about, what do you mean you're upset? What are you upset about? How are they going to know what the Holocaust was like if we didn't build a gas chamber in the gymnasium? We wanted to give the kids, yes, well, some of the kids got to be little Nazis and then some of them got to be Jewish people. It's a, it's to because they're becoming better people. What is wrong? It's uh, absurd, but this is the, this is what happens. So go get the money, make them cough up some money. I'm going to talk about, uh, the condominium in LA right now that's on the market for $50 million. Don't you want to spend $50 million to own a condo in West Hollywood? Google West Hollywood and hit news. Okay. West Hollywood. Okay. okay. Let's see here. First article, member of rappers entourage shot. Ends up in West Hollywood before dying at hospital. Mm. Three sought in fatal shooting at gas station near Beverly Center. Okay. Oh, boy. West Hollywood is a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not good. For crime... If you Google West Hollywood crime, you can you can just read some of the stories about things that are going on. Mm. That's not good. Two weeks ago, the crime has uh, risen by 38%. Man shot near WeHo. Gun owner thwarts home invasion. Mm. Go to the sheriff's weekly crime report. Okay. See what's going on. Assault, grand theft, grand theft, residential burglary, strong strong arm robbery, strong arm robbery, strong arm robbery, grand theft, burglary, <laughs> robbery, vehicle burglary, vehicle burglary, vehicle burglary, other weapon. Well, how about fifty million dollars to live? In the penthouse of a new building, a new, because in Los Angeles now, they're trying to introduce this concept of vertical living because people, you know, what's happening, Los Angeles has always been the home of the single family house mm -hmm. with your yard and maybe your pool and your dogs and kitties running around and the husband tinkering with the car and you're in the back, uh, you know, looking at the lemon tree or the orange tree, uh, idyllic, lovely, yes? But now people are coming in the windows. They're climbing over the fences. They're hanging out in the yard. Maybe a bit of rape, they say. Who knows? And they're killing. So what they're trying to do is they're introducing vertical living because people say, good news, we'll make uh, condo buildings and we'll charge... Uh, millions and millions of dollars for these condos and we'll put guards outside of them so the people that want to rape and kill you can't get in. And we'll put all of the things you'd want, all the finishes, the bathrooms and the kitchens and the marble and the wood and the pine and the oak and the travertine marble mm -hmm. and the this and the that. And you get it all and it's all behind guard gates, guards and gates and guards and gates and gates and guards and guards. And, guards. and it's going to be like the, uh, the castle from the Wizard of Oz with the flying monkeys. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we'll have an army of flying monkeys if anyone comes near us and we'll have a moat and we'll have alligators in the moat. And uh, if you have the little key fob, you can get in, you get right through the alligators say, well, uh, how do you do? And they let you in. It's not a big deal. 50 million is the penthouse apartment. This article says 
a special kind of crazy in L.A., a $50 million condo in the land of homeless tents. There's something funny about Los Angeles, the idea that it has the biggest homeless population in the world, and all the hit shows about L.A. are about real estate. It's all about high-end real estate. And everybody uh, is uh, living in a, uh, you know, like a uh, cooler. Everybody's living in like a Coleman cooler. And nobody is seeing any of the irony in that, in that it is the selling sunsets and the million dollar listings and the Beverly. There's just, there's more shows, so many shows all about the privilege of selling real estate or buying it in Los Angeles, California. And they're trying to sling a $50 million condo in Los Angeles. Wow. I mean, big time. And you can... From your condo, that is fifty million. Mm. Look outside, and you will see people who are filthy, dirty people, from head to toe, soot, lesions. Maybe they look like lepers. Pushing shopping carts full of their belongings in the hot summer. And maybe people like that. That Some people might like that. That might be a benefit. But that is a, a potential view from a $50 million condo in that area. You might... I mean, imagine paying $50 million for a condo. And then outside, you're staring and you're just watching... Society unravel in front of you. Interesting. Get up the video of these realtors talking when the fire alarms are going off and the, the police are going off. This is a very, very funny thing. A bunch of the top real estate agents in Los Angeles, California, are gathered together to talk about how great it is mm. to live in Los Angeles and the, the pride of it and the weather mm. and how great it is. Go to Con yeah, or like wherever. Land, yeah. Let's like so here, listen to this. Uh, for, the, for the summer, for yeah. the year, whatever. I think a lot of New Yorkers are coming for the summer with the intention of maybe staying. But they all want to rent first. That's what I Listen to the background. That's why Malibu is so crazy sold right out. now. Malibu you can't is find a house. sold out. You can't. Go on, you go can't. On, go on, go on. You can't. So let's, let's. I have one for the month of August. Uh -huh. just I have one <laughs> left. On, on, Los, on uh, I always forget the name, not Los Flores. So Josh, what you? La Costa. Josh, you're saying you have you, you can just hear in the, the background I have one friend uh -huh. police sirens and fire trucks as the city burns. I'm not spending 180000 on La Costa. <laughs> That's literally what it was. 180. And guess right. what? He actually did get it. it was, he, he leased it for two weeks for $60,000. Two weeks for $60,000. They have to address the police sirens in a minute. Malibu? You know, you have to have a 31 day rental in Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? For, I'm not involved because I didn't miss it to the For guy. those who are tuning in uh, just now, uh, you're with The Real Deal, TRD Talks Live. We're with some of LA's top brokers talking about the market and the changes since COVID. Uh, Stephen, let's, let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, Nat Frank puts out the oh, Global Wealth Report great. every year. This one must have come out in January, February. And they had, you know, they rank, they sort of rank LA against the other alpha cities, New York, London, Miami, et cetera. Uh, investment, lifestyle, except many other, many tiers. LA was sixth or seventh in sort of the running compared yes. to some of these cities. What's your, what's your sort of unsigned? <laughs> <laughs> take on where it could be now there, after all. There's going to be reversal because if you look at the cities above LA yeah. that are on the night Frank chart, yeah. mm -hmm. they're all high rise cities. That's and you have Hong Kong above LA. Which is the densest. Everyone, right. Yeah, but with the political upheaval going yeah. on there, prices are going to go down and people are going to leave. They're not going to give and up COVID. their freedom. And, and COVID. Thing. So Los Angeles, because of horizontal living and the incredible weather, I, I was surprised to see um, livability that Los Angeles was down in the 10 or 12. Maybe traffic? Well, traffic, but if you <laughs> have to work and live in a big city, there's no place like Los Angeles. There's no snow. The, the, the air is 
relatively clear now. Yeah, traffic, but you wind up living. Okay. You wind up. You <laughs> wind up where living you where traffic yeah. isn't an impediment. You're yeah. not driving from Covina to get to your office in Century right. City. But let's so talk for about us, our police department. I listen to it. You can hear we them right two now. Two minute the response best, time. Right? No, less. <laughs> yeah, so they're ill. They're all mentally ill. So they're, they're all, see, see, they're all sick. Yeah. And to, to live here, to do that job, and God bless them, but they have to be ill. So they're sitting there telling everybody what a great city it is and how the weather is amazing and you can't live anywhere else. How could mm. you live anywhere else? Mm. And in the background, it is the sounds of hell. Just sirens and fire trucks and cops responding to, you know, I don't know, some woman who lit her children on fire <laughs> or, you know, two homeless people who are eating each other in the street. Like, but they all got to smile and it's, you got to keep it light. Keep it. Hey, keep it light. It's like a Saturday night live sketch. If you know, that was a thing you would laugh at, but this is so funny. You just got to, Hey, keep it light. Keep it light. What about our, uh, what about our police response time? <laughs> and they know full, they know full well what's going on here. They know full well, but I get it. They can't, I mean, get that money. Um, so, I mean, I'm just saying, if you have $50 million and you want to buy a condo, there's no better place to do it right now than in West Hollywood, California. Mm. Uh, it's a great investment of $50 million into a condominium so you can do uh, stand-up comedy. If you so choose, you can go and tell people what gets you going. What is your problem? Sheath underwear is the most comfortable underwear that I've ever had. What say you? Same. Absolutely. Do you know the story of this? Well, it's just underwear. What do you mean? The owner of Sheath Underwear was an Iraq War veteran. Oh. And he started a company called Sheath Underwear because he wanted something to do when he got back from Iraq. Isn't that inspiring to you? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I mean, to me, it's really cool. Here's another thing that people don't know about him. And this is, he was the person who locked Chelsea Manning in that cage. And he was very guilty about it. So he started an underwear company for men when he came back. Kind of as a fuck you to her. <laughs> Still. But he's the owner, Robert Patton. And he locked Chelsea Manning in a cage. Go to sheathunderwear.com and get the most comfortable underwear you'll ever wear. If you use the promo code TIM20, you'll also get 20. Wait, I, are you telling me they're giving 20% off the order? Yeah. I mean, it's it seems too generous. That's H-T-T-P dot sheathunderwear.com, S-E-A-T-H, sheathunderwear.com, promo code TIM20 for 20% off your order. The stretchy fabric is made of a moisture-wicking technology. They're super soft, keep everything cool and comfortable and right in place. I mean, you couldn't go swimming in them. They're like swim trunks, too, you know? And they had that dual pouch. Uh, yes. Yeah, dual pouches. Yes. It's a game changer. It is a game changer. I mean, it is great. It's sheath underwear, folks. Everybody's using it, and everyone loves it, and it's... You see the brand new materials they have, especially if you're a sensitive guy. What are they doing? Or gal, man? or they, bamboo and and mesh, brand new materials. Well, do you know for cooling? Comfort. Do you know how he was inspired to do that? Mm -mm. They used to take prisoners of war over there, and they used to have to wrap them in materials where they wouldn't die, so they could still breathe, but they would have they all their senses would be blacked out. So it'd be like sensory blacking out as a way to torture them. But they couldn't die, so they had to let them breathe. Ooh. So that's how he came up with these new materials. That's awesome. Because he was like, wait, we called his old buddies and goes, 
What was that material we used to wrap those people like mummies and leave them out in a hundred degrees sun? Mm -hmm. Go to sheathunderwear.com and get the most comfortable ever underwear ever. Use promo code TIM20. You'll get 20% off your order. That's promo code TIM20, 20% off your order. Only underwear I own, only underwear you own. Correct. Yep. For all of your summer travels, whether you're going abroad or staying domestic, you want to immerse yourself in the culture. Now is a perfect time to start Babel. We always talk about this, Ben. You're learning a language right now. I want to learn a language. We all want to get dual citizenship. We all want uh, places outside of America. We all want to travel. Yeah. Babbel, you need up to 10 minutes to complete a lesson. Only 10 minutes. And you can start having like real life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. This is amazing. You're actually using it right now. Mm. Yeah, I was learning Swedish. I'm switching to Spanish. More practical. Yes. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German, Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can easily access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. I'm really excited about this because I want to learn a language. Well, yeah, you're you, but you already signed up for it. I'm learning a language right now, mm -hmm. and it's German. Oh, my wife's learning German. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ich liebe dich. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription. When you go to babbel.com slash Tim Dillon. Am I reading that right? Because that seems crazy. Oh, it might be a typo. Hmm. Oh, Maybe no, that's, no, that's it. That's what it is. Babbel.com slash Tim for up to 60%, 60% off your subscription. Yeah. I mean, it's too good to be true. Babbel, language for life. So this judge that sold a bunch of children mm -hmm. to um, former judges who sent kids to jail for kickbacks must pay more than $200 million. Mm -hmm. These are some evil fucks. Mm. They were selling kids to jail, to private prison. Mm. Are those kids worth uh, $200 million? Great question. Mm. But U.S. District Judge Christopher Connor awarded $106 million in compensatory damages and $100 million in punitive damages to nearly 300 people in a long-running civil suit against the judges. Writing the platents are, quote, the tragic human casualties of a scandal of epic proportion. In what came to be known as the Kids for Cash scandal, Mark Civarella and another judge, Michael Conahan, shut down a country-run juvenile detention center and accepted $2.8 million in illegal payments from the builder and co-owner of two for-profit lockups. Now, if you remember any of this, this was the guys, they were giving draconian sentences, very long sentences to kids because this is where uh, they were making their money. Civarella ordered children as young as eight to detention. Many of them first-time offenders deemed delinquent for petty theft, jaywalking, jaywalking, truancy, smoking on school grounds, and other minor infractions. These guys should be executed, truly. They should be put to death and killed. I mean, this is insane. The judge often ordered youths he had found delinquent to be immediately shackled, handcuffed, and taken away without giving them a chance to put up a defense or even say goodbye to their families. Should we have on the show a thing called Point for Hassan Piker? <laughs> and should we have like a little thing? What is, is he? It? What race is he? Uh, I can look it up. Let me see. Is he a Turkish? Hassan is, uh, is of Turkish descent, it says. So should we have a little Turkish delight, the candy, and when something very bad happens mm -hmm. in the capitalist system, because should we say, point for Hassan Piker, we, get, we put the little Turkish delight over there? The little cube? The little cube. I like don't cube. you like that? Isn't I, that a candy that you like? Yeah, you got me in, uh, in Australia. Yeah, I don't love it. But this is a point for uh, him, mm. who did, he did like a 71-minute reaction uh video to my Joe Rogan rant. Oh, really? I think so. I don't know. Who knows with okay. these people? I mean, it's, you know, okay. the guy streams 38 hours a day. Okay. I mean, I, I get it. I'd be doing it too. I'd be doing, I'd be doing it too. Tim Dillon eats pancakes. Let's react to that. But what does it say about the capitalist system? 
Um, it's unlikely the now adult victims will even see a fraction of the eye popping damages award, but a lawyer for the plaintiff said it's a recognition of the enormity of the disgraced judge's crimes. I mean, the judges, this is the evil of people that pervert this system. You should not have private for profit prisons. Mm. It's a bad idea. Now, do they sponsor our show? I don't know. Probably. But they're still not. It's not a good idea to have private prisons where children as young as eight years old are going there for jaywalking. Isn't that crazy to you? Of the 280 people, it says 79 were under the age of 13. 79 of these kids were under the age of 13. That's horrible. And they were sentenced to these crazy long sentences, right? Mm. How long? I mean, it would vary, but I mean, enough to really ruin your life. Look at this. Several of the childhood victims who were part of the lawsuit when we began in 2009 have since died from overdoses or suicide. I mean, yeah. Can we just for a minute? Can we for a minute think about this from the judge's perspective? <laughs> oh, no. I said for one minute, okay. not forever. Okay. Kids are pieces of shit. <laughs> no, it's, listen, it's still, these judges are bad. They should be uh, executed. Mm. Really. I mean... They're evil. This is evil. Um, this is insane. Kids for cash judge released from prison over virus concerns. Yeah, I missed this part of the article. Because of COVID, they let him do, uh, what's it called? I don't know. It's called uh, this, uh, released a home confinement with six years left on his sentence because of COVID. So he like. What? Someone, I mean, Jesus. What happened to vigilante justice here? If that was my kid, I would kill these. I would kill these judges. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should, but I would. You know, some of these parents might have been like, "Take this kid and get it out of here." I got things to do. Man, evil behavior from these guys when you're when you're talking about. And by the way, this isn't okay if people are older either. I'm not trying to do one of these things where I go, oh, well, the yeah. guy's 25, you can sell him. Hmm. This is a bad idea. And in fact, fucking schools should start building private prisons in the playgrounds to teach the kids about confinement in a for-profit institution. And if I was a teacher, and I should be, we would have private prison simulations all the time where kids would be locked up and we would explain to them why this happened. That seems like a good idea mm -hmm. and I'm for it. These judges are horrible and hopefully they die. Um, yeah, I mean, this is crazy. Have you, you know, a lot of like people like, and I know some people too. I don't know anyone that went to one of these private prisons. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. As anybody. a kid, I don't know mm -hmm. anybody. My neighbor Jill once put a pins petition on me, person in need of supervision. And Jill lived next to me, and my parents would sometimes be gone. And I was in the backyard with a friend of mine, and we were smoking pot, and I think we threatened her with a knife. <laughs> but it was like a joke, but we like, waved a knife around. We were like, we'll kill you. <laughs> but it was like not, you know what I mean? She called the police. I got a p pins petition, person in need of supervision, and I had to go to like family court to get that lifted or get that removed. Oh, okay. So that was like CPS or CPS, something? CPS, exactly. Yeah. Child Protective Services. And they tried to put a, a pins petition on me and we had to go to my uncle and we went to court and we got that removed. And I said, I've been doing the right things and, you know, I'm a good person. But this is a... This is a real problem. If you do not have a family that can help you, 
Um, and a judge like this sentences you to a situation like this, you will end up ODing or you will end up uh, turning to drugs. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly sad. So these guys are pieces of shit. Um, point for Hassan Piker. The imaginary Turkish delight who put it there. <laughs> we'll stack them up. Who's what's the other side? What? Well, is there another side? Yeah, when he's not right. Oh, okay. And then that's also Turkish delight. No, that would have to be in a, like an Amer of food of my of my heritage, mm. like a potato. <laughs> so if he's wrong about something, we'll put a potato on one side of the scale. Mm. I like that. Like a big scoop of mashed potatoes, and we'll fulfill the desk and see who's <laughs> who's correct. I, of course, I, I'm kidding. I, I, you know, I just, this is an egregious example of the horrors of the current system. I mean, really, can you find, and by the way, I want to talk about this, this new season of Cobra Kai is insane, what they're going to do. Okay. No, and I didn't, well, you don't know that. You don't, this is not, Okay. I have inside information here, and I barely, I barely want to discuss this because this is going to enrage people. And I don't want to be the first one to talk about it. Cobra Kai is a show on Netflix about karate, right? Mm -hmm. It comes from the Karate Kid, right? Yes. It's, this, it's in its fourth yeah. season. It's fourth season on Netflix. It is a, uh, what would you call this? A reboot uh, or an extension? It's a sequel to the original Karate it Kid films. It is a films, sequel is to it's... the original Karate Kid films. Mm. What they're doing is they have these dojos, these warring dojos mm. of uh, these martial arts uh, groups, kids. They fight each other and they dislike each other, right? Mm. Cobra Kai on Netflix. They're adding a dojo, this is true, of all unhoused people in Los Angeles, homeless people who are forced to beat the shit out of each other for food. And, and the kids and the homeless people fight each other. There's a, a third dojo this season and it's all homeless people in Los Angeles and the kids go and fuck them up. Mm. The kids are like grabbing their fucking chopping carts and threatening just beat the shit out of them. And then the homeless people learn karate and they come back and they fuck these kids up. The homeless people learn the art because it's martial arts. Mm. They learn how to control themselves and it is actually the pathway for many of them to get housing and to get sober martial arts. And this is the whole idea is that martial arts is actually what needs to happen with the homeless. Mm -hmm. And then it is not more funding or even more police or more enforcement. Literally it is martial arts is what changes the, the changes the thing for these homeless people and I just think that's a little weird, personally, that they would do this. Cobra Kai on Netflix would do a whole season where you have a dojo of homeless people being forced to beat the living shit out of each other. I mean, to me, it feels wrong. Mm -hmm. You know what? It, it feels tone deaf yes. to me personally. It feels tone deaf. To me personally, they teach the homeless people, many of them who have like one of the, one of the new characters is a guy with like Iraq war flashbacks. Okay. And they teach him how to quiet his mind. And Michael LaRusso grabs him and goes, quiet your mind. He's like, you don't know the things I've done in Fallujah, the things I did for this guy. And he's like, quiet your mind and beat the shit out of that kid. And now you have just homeless, mm. homeless people learning karate because that's really, and, and you know, in all seriousness, it, it's probably the reason that many of them are homeless is that they don't have discipline. And actually in Cobra Kai's defense, martial arts is like a great organizing principle of how to like structure your life. So like it, it's maybe not the worst idea to give homeless people free karate lessons. 
and let them join the dojo. There are certainly worse ideas that I've heard. Yeah, especially for that show, I think. Yeah, that show took a shit around season three. Yeah. And it's over now. Mm -hmm. It's all over, you know? The kids on Stranger Things are like 38 years old. <laughs> They're like divorced twice. <laughs> You're going to bump into one of those kids in LA uh, in like three years. It's going to be like, I'm divorced, bro. Like Finn Wolford's going to have like a divorce yeah. in like five years. And he's going to be like sitting there like drinking coffee in a cafe, like smoking cigarettes, staring at the ground. <laughs> And you're going to be like, hey, what's going on, Finn? You're going to be like, hey, yeah, what? Like, what's going on? He's like, yeah, I'm f fucking divorced. and I can't work because I'm 40 and I still look like a freak. I'm kidding. You know, Rosebud Baker, a comedian, just did some movie that he directed. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know which one. I won't show it on screen. I'm just curious. Well, we're not trying to give these people publicity. They're doing enough on their own, really, frankly. <laughs> You know, who, who, who helps me? Does anyone help me, by the way? Is it, does anyone help me? Or do I have to keep uh, pumping everyone else? Can anyone help me, please? Yeah, his first feature film. It's called, what's it called? Uh, well, I think that's what he's, uh, to write and direct new horror comedy film, it says here. In yeah, why am, I, why am I not in it? Mm -hmm. Why am I not in it? Am I not funny? Nice. Am I not horrible? His directorial debut. What's it about? Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, uh, write and direct a new horror comedy. It's called Hell of a Summer. Uh... Plot details and storylines are being kept hush hush, and it's unclear when the film is slated to hit what? theaters. What? Why can't we know what it is? Hell of a summer. Is it about when we put my mother in a home? <laughs> These things always suck. Horror comedies? Always bad. Yeah, I always can, I can think of one. Cabin in the Woods. What else? I was going to say Army of Darkness. Okay, there's some things that are the Shaun of the Dead, things like that. Oh, yeah, that's, I love that, actually. But I, I, what? We just keep naming. No, no, you're, you're... No, you're right. It's like three. Ben's a fan of art. I'm a creator of it. We have very different, <laughs> we have very different opinions. It's true. We have very different opinions on things. I am a creator of art. Ben is like a fanboy, mm. so we have different we have different reactions. But he did direct a Netflix special, and by the way, I don't think people estimate, understand how difficult it is mm. to direct a Netflix special because you stand up comedy special because you have to point the cameras at the stage. It is one of the hardest things that anyone has ever done, which is why every member of Ben's family has tagged him ninety five times in the thing that says directed by Ben Avery because they're so proud of him and it, they have a reason to be proud of him mm -hmm. because the people that shot the special work for Louis CK and Joe Rogan, mm. this group of people. So they were incredibly new at this. They were novices. They had only done what four specials with Joe and fought four with Louis or something. They, had, they hadn't done a lot. So Ben made sure that they all pointed mm. the cameras in the direction of the stage and not, I don't know, the lobby of the theater or someone else. How was it working with them? What were the, what were the, the real challenges of the... Oh, the challenges, of, man. Of getting the cameras at the, to face the stage. Well, uh, first of all, I was thwarted immediately because I tried to leave all the lens caps on the cameras wow. when they were shooting. Because I was actually trying to sabotage the whole well, thing. Well, but no, let's time. think about it. Your family's incredibly proud of you about this. Mm. And they're very proud. And do they do they understand that they any of them could have done this? Like, do your brothers and mother understand that they too could have done this uh, thing that you did? Should we say they are also executive producers? And by the way, why is my fat agent... 
on a, that I did not know. Why I, is he? Why special thanks to him? I think. Well, he got me the meeting with Brady, so he set up a Zoom meeting with Brady. Did he put himself? Did he put himself as special thanks? Because no one put him. Oh no! I think it's Sam Talent, uh, Wendy, who runs. Com- and I think it might be Justin. Actually. I know it is, but who put him? <laughs> That's no, I mean literally, who put him? I have no idea. As special thanks, who put him? I don't know, man. What? I put Sam Talent and Wendy. Who put him? Once it got into Netflix hands, someone could have just sent them a note. Well, it wasn't me. Well, it's just a little bit absurd and insane that my agent who sat there through the first show that was unusable eating spaghetti or whatever he was doing uh, has put himself as a special thanks. You know who no one thanked me. Everybody else got thanked the agent you. But it was difficult. It is difficult. It is not, it's not an easy thing to do to point cameras at a stage. It is very difficult and I'm very happy that Ben did it as well as he did. It was it, it was tough and trying, but we appreciate that, and we are very, very, very grateful to him, a genius of, of a man who was able to point a camera at me mm-hmm. for an hour. It's like this show. It's exactly. Well, this show's more difficult. Occasionally you look something up. <laughs> A little harder, right? Uh, but it was, you know, that was that was pretty big. Ordering all of your summer essentials with Dash Pass by DoorDash is a great way to get everything you need. And during the summer of Dash Pass, you can save money and access members-only offers that will help you feel easy, breezy, and beautiful all summer long. Summer is in full swing, and the celebration begins during the summer of Dash Pass by DoorDash with weekly, with weekly members-only benefits and new items released every week. You can shine bright and feel cool. All season long. Do you order from DoorDash, but wish you didn't have to pay delivery fees? Well, dreams do come true. During the summer of Dash Pass, you can save money and enjoy members-only benefits every week on top of 0% delivery fees all year round. Say hello to summer savings during the summer of Dash Pass from DoorDash. Say hello, summer savings. Zero delivery fees, exclusive items. We're going to say it again. More than 25,000 members only uh, members only offers nationwide. Dash Pass by DoorDash has everything you need to make your summer memorable. Shine bright like during DoorDash's summer. Shine bright like a diamond. What do we do, Ben? What are you telling him about the code? Oh, so what's awesome about this what? As you get to, well, one, you get to shine bright during DoorDash's summer of Dash Pass. Fuck yeah. So that's, that's not, that's shine a, bright like a diamond. On top of that, you get 50% off your first order up to $15 value if you use promo code Tim Dillon at checkout when, when you the sun shines, we'll shine together. That's 50% off your first order up to $15 value when you sign up for DoorDash during summer of Door Dash Dash. Pass. DoorDash. Using promo code Tim Dillon. T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. Don't put, forget. Put that, your hands in the air. That's code Tim Dillon. T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. And wave it like you just don't care. For 50% off your first order, up to $15 in value. It's a party in the USA. Dash Pass benefits only on eligible orders that meet the minimum subtotal. Terms apply. Sometimes people are very stressed out. Do you understand that? Oh, yeah. I, I can relate. And sometimes those people are in the summer. Oh, yeah. And they're in the summer. And they're upset. And they're sweating. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why am I not happier? You understand that? Yeah, I mean, well, you got to take care of your mind, dude. How? I mean... Well, can I ask you, let me put it in like the layman's terms real quick. How well would you take care of your car if you had to keep the same one your entire life? I don't think I would take care of it well at all. Well, that's how our brains work. So why don't we treat them that way? 
If I had a car my entire life, I'd probably beat the shit out of it. <coughs> well, you know? well, you shouldn't treat your brain like that because how we care for our minds affects how we experience life. Why? Uh, because it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. Why? Because there are plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, like learning a new language or taking power naps. Why? There's also better help online therapy. Oh. There you go. What is it? Um, well, here's my thing. Sometimes I want to stay home and get therapy and not leave my house. Is that what this is? Yeah, if you were already thinking about inventing it, it already exists and can I, it's very successful. Can I get someone on the computer to listen to me bitch and moan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't have to leave my house? No. N never what again. What if I don't like this therapist? Can I get a new one? Yes. When can I start communicating? Well, it's an online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live I chat. imagine, yeah, I imagine this would cost me around $6 million a year. Uh, let me see here. Let's see. Oh, our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Tim D. What? Betterhelp.com slash Tim D. Are you telling me? Mm -hmm. I'm asking you a question here, motherfucker. <laughs> You're telling me. Can I talk about my experience with therapy? Okay. I was like really sad in college and um, I went to therapy a few times and I felt like a lot better after, but. Well, you shouldn't have. But my therapist was kind of, eh, but he wasn't my favorite. And I wish I could have got a new guy, but I stopped going. But then you don't want to fire your guy. That's why you just want to do everything over. With my the help therapist, therapy. when I was younger, I went because my parents were getting a divorce. I think everyone should go to therapy. For sure. I think I think it's great. I think you should try it. If you never tried therapy, you should try it once. It might be a game changer. Betterhlp.com slash Tim D. Slash Tim D. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. And not only this, it could be a live chat only therapy session. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't have to. So go to some. Can I sing a song about therapy? Yeah, yeah, do it. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like I don't. My only friend is the city I live in, city of angels. I joined BetterHelp and got 10% off. Wow, that was beautiful. I wrote that. I don't ever want to feel <laughs> like I didn't use BetterHelp. Take me to the place I love. The BetterHelp website. We're done. Okay, we're Sugar Bay. What? It's the fucking chili peppers. All oh, right. You sick fuck. Andrew Tate, they've removed him. I don't know what's what why they're removing him. They're just removing people now they don't like, it seems. Yeah, and they never give a clear cut. Here's yeah, they never give a reason. Yeah. I mean, by the way, I've heard a lot of what he has said, and I, I know some of it gets people going, but I, I you know, some of what he says that I've heard isn't that crazy. What is this? Misogyny is a hateful ideology that is not tolerated on TikTok. What? That's not true. Um, yeah, I just, they seem like they're removing people with whom they have underlying ideological differences and they're just trying to figure out how to get rid of them. And again, I'm not joining Hustlers University. I won't be signing up. But I don't think you should, this guy should be uh, removed. I, I don't, you know. What is, like, do, do they even tell anyone why? Well, they just say you're misogynist, but then they don't, like, 
the the thing is they don't link you to the specific thing. You but do. wasn't it's he a misogynist a, a month ago when he was on too? Like this is what I don't understand. Mm. What 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 what's changed? Why can't a misogynist talk? I don't understand. He thinks. Let's say he thinks men are better than women. Mm-hmm. Let's say he has that belief. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. It can should he not be able to say anything? You know. I, I, I'm just, I'm unmoved. People will counter his belief with their own beliefs. Some of them will be quite persuasive. I, you know, I just don't understand why now it's like misogyny is yeah. it grounds yeah, and for that, getting kicked off. And apparently he's been booted from Twitter as of 2017 because he tweeted. Now here's a specific one. Right. He tweeted that women who are sexually assaulted bear some responsibility. Now, I don't know the context of that post, but or what made him think it, but I think if you look at his larger quote, his larger context, mm. he said something to the extent of if you go out and get drunk and go home with a guy and get into his bed and he does the wrong thing, you have to analyze some of your behavior. Now, by the way, you could be offended by that. It's absolutely appropriate to be offended by that and say, I I think that he's justifying or excusing uh, uh, rape. Mm -hmm. But I also don't think, by the way, that that is a crazy beyond the pale opinion that is not held by lots of people. And what I mean by that is this. There are a lot of reasonable, rational people out there that think that, yes, men are violent. Certainly when you Mm -hmm. add alcohol to the mix and they're strangers and it doesn't justify their behavior at all. But the idea that a woman doesn't have to take extra care to protect herself in our society is probably naive to believe that. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, I, 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 again, I just think that like they want a villain and he may want to be the villain. I don't know. I think they're casting him in the role as the villain and maybe he wants to be that role. I don't know him. But if if I look at the the examples I'm being given here, I'm not seeing anything sufficient to remove this guy from social media. Yeah. Completely. I don't see any reason for that. And again, no one's going to care what I say. Right. But I did just speak on the Joe Rogan show and I said the most um, I said the most meaningful thing that's ever been said on his show uh, that that rant I had was the most articulate meaningful thing that's ever been said in the history of the world to be honest it was do you believe there was anything that's ever been said that's better than that uh, Sermon on the Mount um, What's the Sermon on the Mount? I think it's uh, it's that one Jesus did where he was like, we should all like be nice to each other and stuff. Yeah, how'd that work out? Like, they, I'm like, like, it's like I'm talking about shit that's real. It's going to actually happen. You're talking about fairy tales. Um, yeah, I just, listen... I'm not saying that women are should be blamed for rape. I'm saying that someone should be allowed to offer an opinion on a controversial situation. He's, in one video, he demonstrates how he would attack a female partner if she ever accused him of cheating. Quote, it's bang out the machete, boom in her face, and grip her by the neck. Shut up, bitch. Um... It's bang out the machete, boom in the face, mm-hmm. and grip her by the neck. Shut up, bitch. Um, what's he doing there? Cutting her head off? Uh, he's just describing uh, how he would attack a female partner if she ever uh, accused him of cheating. And he goes, it's bang out the machete, boom in her face, and grip her by the neck. Like, you, you got to threaten her. You got it right up next to her. Well, but if my whole thing is if he didn't cheat mm-hmm. and she's accusing him of cheating, how's he supposed to respond? I'm 
I'm confused. Um, maybe it's in maybe it's in a better context here. Should we play this? Maybe it'll make sense. Yes. Okay. A man can only cheat if he loves someone else. If I have a woman who I truly love, and I go out and fuck, and I come back to her, and I don't care about her, and I only love my girl, that's not cheating. That's exercise. If she even talks to That's very team, funny. <laughs> By the way, that's incredibly funny. Yeah, it's not that bad. Well, well you know, listen, man. People are going to, this is what's going to happen. Um, the bigger you get, the more of a target you become. And listen, I'm not saying Andrew Tate is, you know, I don't think he should be the go-to for, I think, young guys listening to him probably will get some bad ideas in their head, but there's young people often have bad ideas in their head and good ideas in their head, and they sort them out as they get older. This is not new. None of this is new. I had bad ideas in my head when I grew up, and it, you know who they were from? My parents. It, you know, now there's people on the internet that can influence people for sure, but there's a lot of other people that can influence you too, positively and negatively. I don't see any rule. The ruling is... Gavel, put him back on social media, please. I don't see any reason holding the machete to someone's neck. If that's a problem, well, I don't know. Get me out of here. He didn't do it. He said it. Yeah. So I'll put a machete to someone's neck. I mean, that's... Hypothetically speaking, he would do such a thing. If. He said if. Right. X, then Y. If I'm accused of cheating, I'll use the machete. <laughs> But he's not really going to do it. It's probably a goof. It's a joke. I don't know. There's, there's got to be a villain all the time. We're a society, and you make a lot of money being the villain, by the way. People like villainizing you. And um, around the time the UK police were investigating abuse, Tate is understood to have left the UK for Romania. And one video explaining his reasons... For the movie suggested it was because it'd be easier to evade rape charges. He goes, this is, quote, for probably 40% of the reason. I'm not a rapist, but I like the idea of just being able to do what I want. I like being free. Well, but does that mean he's raping people? It, technically, no. He, he's saying he likes the idea of having it as an option. Because where... you could read that two ways. He goes, listen, I'm not a rapist. I like the idea of being able to do what I want. I like the idea of doing that. I'm, what I'm free. So I think... There's a way to interpret that where he's going, listen, I'm not like a sicko. I just don't want to be, uh, I don't want to live in a nanny state. Right. But I didn't know, you know what I mean? Like, I think he's. Mm -hmm. Then in April, the brother's mansion was raided by police following a tip off from the U.S. Embassy that a 20 year old, uh, 21 year old American woman was being held against her will. Tates were taken in for questioning before being released and denying wrongdoing. The Romanian authorities said last week that the investigation later expanded to cover human trafficking and rape allegations was ongoing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about any of this. He just had a cam house where he would like, there was like cam girls and stuff. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you know... My problem is when you take somebody off social media, they can't respond to any of this. Right. This is the big problem. If you destroy people's ability to respond, you can say stuff about them. And this is a Gavin McGinnis point, actually, that I'm making here. Many years ago when I, when I knew Gavin, um, who, who he is also controversial. Um, but Gavin said, yeah, they kicked me off all these things and I couldn't respond. So people could say anything about me. They could say I'm a Nazi, I'm this, I'm that. And I did not have any place to respond to what was being said about me. So I, no matter what you think about Gavin, that that is a valid argument that if you kick somebody off and you call them names, maybe they're true, maybe they're not, but that person now has no recourse to talk back. And then you can kind of villainize them and create this character that they may or may not have been. And this seems to be 
the MO of a lot of these companies. This is what it seems to be. It does not seem to be changing. And I do believe this ultimately will lead to a kind of a schism. Google schism and tell everyone what it means. This is going to lead to a schism. It is a split or decision between strongly opposed sections or parties caused by differences in opinion or belief. That's correct. What, this is what it means. What it means is that I believe you're going to see, I think Rumble's one of the first attempts at this with a lot of people on it. You're going to just further see uh, people retreating into their corners here. You think you think Tate'll go to Rumble? I get he could be a Rumble guy. I could see that. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Or uh, as a pickup artist guy, those guys usually have their own websites. He could go on like a pickup artist forum and and probably destroy behind his own paywall though. Right. Listen. I don't know what he's doing. I'm sure the courses he teaches are not uh, going to lead you to be a billionaire, but I think when you just take somebody off all of social media, uh, it is, you know, there has to be some, there has to be Andrew Tate's Hustlers University affiliate program shut down following Meta ban. Mm. This guy got so big so quick. Yeah, they put a stop to that. Yeah. And again, I don't know much about him. So, I mean, it's very possible that he's not a good guy, but there's a lot of people that aren't a good guy, right? It's also possible he's misunderstood or whatever. And, it, I, you know, I don't, I don't care. I, you know, whether people are good or bad to me is such a boring and uh, it's like, it's like, what is the greater, what is the, what is the greater threat? This guy or companies deciding whether or not you can speak. <laughs> it's like, is this a guy, this like pickup artist guy with the university, the biggest threat, is he a bigger threat than the collusion of government and big tech this big blob of power that's completely unaccountable that can shut you off at any time. Is that not dangerous at all? Does that not merit a discussion? And we're talking about a Rom whether a Romanian guy got in a fight with his girlfriend in 2017. Cause he's got, he's hot on the internet for three months. This is, this is the thing. He must be vanquished now. Well, for what? He becomes the president? I'm, I'm confused. As always, again, it's not defending, you know, the, the, the forest for the trees, which is something that no one can see and people choose not to. Um, if fathers cannot, cannot go back to talking to their sons, we're all doomed. Doesn't matter if it's Andrew Tate or whoever. If, if people cannot go back to educating their children about how to act and behave, then I, I don't know what hope there is, really. So this guy can be this kind of a scapegoat and he's got some wacky ideas, but at the end of the day... You know, I think it. you know, you got to look at really what is the reason for his popularity? What is the reason for the popularity of a lot of people? Is it because we do live in a world where many manifestations of traditional masculinity are kind of bemoaned and demonized and called toxic and that dudes are trying to figure out and navigate a new landscape. And sometimes it just feels good if somebody goes, hey, fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going to say egregious, crazy shit. Because 
the new world is exhausting, tiring, and there's nothing in it for you. They're building a world where if you're a straight white guy or any straight guy, really, um, you're constantly told that you inherently your nature is a, a danger and a problem. And there's somebody who comes along and goes, no, it's not. You're actually fine. You're okay. And that's popular. Well, of course it's going to be pop. Why wouldn't it be popular? Now, yes. Does it go too far? And does he say crazy shit? I'm sure it's the internet, but well, why is it? Why is it getting an audience? Why is it gaining traction? Because no one is speaking to these young kids, young men, young dudes. They're, they're not being served by anybody speaking to them. Groups of people that are being championed or being included in a discussion or being praised do not include a lot of these young dudes who have no idea where they fit into society. So it's the job of their fathers or the job of their families, communities, but maybe all that shit's not working, right? Maybe it's not happening. Enter Andrew Tate, enter whoever. And, you know, some of what he said, I think uh, you, that I've heard has been pretty good. It's like, stop whining, figure, figure yourself out. There are ways that you can be self-reliant, productive. You know, this doesn't mean that these are all going to work. But I do think some of it is positive, for sure. Um, and I've always had a problem when everybody goes, yeah, we're just going to delete people. And then everyone goes, good. And then they enjoy the deplatforming of their enemies. And then when it happens to them, they don't, uh, they don't make the connection. They fail. They fail to make the connection. Yeah. But I don't know. I would not. I don't know if I'd be buying his course. I don't really, I don't know how many people's course I would buy. What is his course at Hustlers University? Is it like lesson one? How to choke a bitch out with a machete? I don't know. It's supposed to be like, uh, helps you with investing. And I'll, but I'll join it if it's about the machete. Uh, thanks for all the, uh, Positive feedback with uh, Ben's directorial debut. TimDillonComedy.com for uh, any live dates if we put them up. We have a merch drop. When's that coming? You've handled that too. When's that uh, coming? Uh, well, is, didn't you say is, you want to move Is it your to family going to do that? Are they going to go, congrats on the merch, Ben? Ben emailed the designer who did the merch. You think we'll have like seven of those things? Congrats to... Ben, he did, he emailed the merch guy. Congrats. Yay. So when do you think that it comes out? Like January? Like, were you saying like October 1st? I would like it to come out in late September, October. Do you think that's possible? Very possible, yeah. Ben's angry with me because we... We ended up recording the episode late, so he, he harbors a lot of resentments and rage. He's a very rageful and angry person, but that anger only destroys him. It has absolutely no impact on me. Mm -hmm. You understand? No, it's not I'm true. a sober person. Yep. I don't have resentments. Ben mm -hmm. white knuckles his sobriety and has resentments and rage issues and anger, mm -hmm. but I don't have those things. Nope. Every so, every second you spend hating is like stealing a precious jewel from yourself. I that's do not right. Hate. You know what resentments are? It's hating someone while they're out dancing. They're unaffected. So I'm unaffected by your hatred of me. You've been very hateful all day. You don't you don't feel like that. I thought I've been like funny and fun. You've been very sloth like and hateful. <laughs> yes, and you've been very tight. You've been like spaced out and kind of out of it. And, uh, you know, it's just the behavior. 
just the behavior. It's not my, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Right? What's well, not your fault? Whatever you're going through. I don't think I'm growing, going through anything. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, uh, you're tired. No, I'm just, I'm not even tired. I'm just chilling. I got, I'm, I'll be up till five. Why will you be up till five? Get the episode out. You're like the slaves on the plantation outside of that school picking the cotton. You want to sing an old slave song together? Oh, uh, how about, um, what's that one? I don't know. Really low voice. Well, that's not a slave song. It's Old Man River. That's a slave song. No, he's just on a, he's on a, he's on a river boat. But is he like, I don't pick cotton? Oh, yeah. He does say that. Old man. Yeah. Well, anyway, I do not. You know, it is that. Yeah, I guess it's true. Do you have anything else to plug here? Well, can you get them excited about the merch? You keep downplaying the merch. You're like, oh, it won't be. It's going to be good. It'll be fine. I came up with uh, one of the designs for it. And what is your design that you came up with? The, the, the golf one. The golf one. Okay. Okay. I chose the typeface and. Uh, yeah. I came up with the design for the knife fight. Well, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Surprise. It's supposed to be a surprise. No one's supposed oh, to know. I came up with a uh, fake business. You came up with the Enron logo in the F. Mm. But I came up with the actual fake business. But I I edited the podcast that you did that went out. That's correct. And I could have, like, the camera could have been out of focus the whole time. Maybe I could have forgot to hit record. It That's right. Lost to the sands of time. That's right. But you didn't do it. I'm sure you'll do that more and more <laughs> often. As as, as you <laughs> as you try to kill me, Ow. which is fine. Stop imitating Joe. So wrong of you. Ow. No. Um. <laughs> stop, <laughs> idiot. We're delusional. It's one o three a.m. We've got three more hours to go here. Unless I put it out tomorrow at six, because I wonder if it'll mess us up in the algorithm to put it out so early. When are you going to put it out? I'm thinking maybe tomorrow at 6, since it's so late. If we put it out, no one's going to be up. No one's going to be watching it. And then it's just going to get... Yeah, put it out tomorrow at 6. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I forgot. It's Saturday. Yeah. What? Can you play Aquafina doing the black scent from... Yeah, I just can't play the uh, video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just do the audio. And do the audio? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aquafina Black scent. Oh, there's like compilations of her doing this? Oh, that's amazing. Black scent compilation. Yeah, I just won't play. Uh... Can we just leave with this? Because I think it's funny. Okay. And I don't know why anyone's mad at it. And I actually think it's, I like this. I think it's fun. Sorry about Danny. This is the Ocean Eight's recruitment scene. Oh, I gotta slide to this now. Yeah. She came back though. She like she like. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Red is money, okay? Follow really? Free card, Monty. Okay. Follow the queen. Live your dream, but don't sleep. Don't sleep. Cause she might disappear. Right? I like it. Yeah. That's crazy she to came me. Back, though. She like she like you. All right, let's hit it, and we're following the. She queen. said, "Let's hit it, and we're following the queen." I like it's it. Our only choice. I think you it's good. I think it's fun. Wait a minute. Now, by the way, is that Andrew Tate's fault? Dude, that's so crazy. Is that Andrew Tate's fault? Is there a way to blame that on Andrew Tate, too? Tim Dillon Comedy, if you, uh, Tim J. Dillon, D I L L O N on Instagram, Twitter, Real Hero Netflix special. Thank you. We will see you soon. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs>